<laughs> Welcome to Breath Talk, everyone. Our mission in these conversations is to discuss the breath. Yes. The breath is an underused tool. It's a free tool and a tool that can activate both sides of your nervous system. It can both energize and calm. It can create a panic attack or it can soothe one. It is the center of everything that we do. And without it, we would be nothing. And yet, we take it for granted. It is not a standard in our schooling. It is not intentionally practiced daily. We are not taught how to take a proper breath. And our world piles on more and more stress every day. Stress that we carry with us to bed at night, only to be added to again the next day. As a whole, our collective consciousness is disconnected from the incredible power of the breath. We have so friggin' much to learn. So today, let's carve out and dedicate a little bit of time to an open conversation about the breath. Today with us, we have Chuck McGee the third, dedicated pulmonaut. He is certified in all sorts of breathing modalities, and he's been at this for a long time. Chuck, would you lead us in a just a short breath technique? Oh, absolutely. So sit back in your chair. Uh, if you're driving, maybe don't do this. Uh, sit back in your chair and try and get as much space between your shoulders and ears as you can. That, that help open up the shoulders, open up the rib cage. We're looking for a lateral expansion in our lower two ribs and a lateral expansion in our chest as we inhale. We don't want it so much to rise, we want it to open. And it's not just about pushing your belly out, it's about a full expansion around your torso. So that's the optimal breath we're looking for. Not, not this belly breath where your ribs don't move uh, and your chest rises, but like a full expansion of your torso. We're gonna take five, we'll do five. Five deep breaths. We're gonna go in for four seconds, out for six seconds, and we're gonna hold for one second at the end. And if you'd like, nose. in through the nose, if you'd like, put your tongue to the roof of your mouth and push it to the roof of your mouth. This helps pull the tongue out of your airway and makes it easier to nasal breathe. Uh, before we do that, we're gonna clear your nose if it's clogged up, you know, so you can actually do the exercise. To do so correctly, you take a deep breath in, breathe out comfortably, pinch your nose shut, and then slowly rock your head. So everyone together fully in, out, pinch your nose and slowly rock your head. When you feel the need to breathe, you're gonna let go of the nose and you're gonna inhale nice and slow through the nose. And you might need to repeat that two or three times, but this should definitely open up your nasal passages. And now that you know, you, you've kind of warmed up the tool we're about to use, we're gonna take five breaths in for four seconds, out for six and hold for one. If you want to make this exercise a little more deep, you can hum on that six second exhale. So here we go. Don't worry about the count, I'll count for us. All together, fully in. Two, three, four, out. Two, three, four, five, six, hold. In. Two, three, four, out. Two, three, four, five, six, hold. In. Two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six, hold. Last one, in, two, three, four, out, two, three, four, five, six. And let's hold this a little longer. Hold, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now let your breath return to normal. In and out through the nose, soft, low and deep if you can. And just notice how focusing on your breath for around a minute can really impact your body and mental focus in the moment. Totally. Yeah, and for anybody that was with us this uh, this afternoon, comment in the chat or shoot us a message or anything like that. Um, always curious to see what the experiences are on your end. And um, yeah, so thank you, Chuck, for leading us through that. Really appreciate yeah. that. And um, I'm actually just trying to go through my notes here because I do have notes. I would do that five times a day. Yeah. So, you know, wake up, do Wim Hof Method breath work in the morning, you know, drive to work. And before you go into work, do that breath work. Or, you know, before you make that walk to your computer screen, uh, yeah. if we're, you're working remotely, do that breath work. And, and try and keep your posture correct as, you know, you're um, sitting in your chair. Don't like hunch over. Don't ah, just sit back, relax. It's, it's just digital. It'll be there. Take your time. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's really about you know bringing a little bit of that awareness to your breath throughout the day and creating moments to be with the breath in between your different activities, mm -hmm. um, and that's just like a really short, easy practice to let go of some of that stress that you've already started carrying with you, whether that's from the night before or from the morning or whatever it was that stressed you out or brought a little bit of extra weight to you, so that you can drop that throughout the day and arrive at the end of your day feeling relaxed and together instead of feeling like you were just a snowball that you know fell down a hill and picked up speed until you smashed into a brick wall <laughs> there's that i mean another good analogy is if someone starts to, you know if someone irritates you someone pisses you off at the beginning of your day and the whole day you're just like man that all day you're you're reliving that one moment again and again constantly stressing yourself out when if you just took the time when it happened to feel all of those emotions, to allow yourself to be upset, it'll pass and the rest of your day can be like a blank slate. Yeah. It, it's that it's that dwelling on it. What could I have? It's already done. Who cares what you could have done differently? Yeah. It's, it's over. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so interesting because, you know, there's so much around meditation per se, where it's difficult. Like, oh, I can't do this. I sit down and my mind is wondering here, wondering there. And it's just, you know, meditation doesn't work for me, quote unquote, for a lot of people say that. Um, one of the main, you know, the main access to meditation and to being able to sit there and be present is putting your attention on the breath. Well, what do you, I ask people, what are you paying attention to? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, that, exactly. that's, that's not meditation. That's just sitting there. That's just sitting there. In confusion. In confusion. Like that's, <laughs> Which, breeds more confusion yeah and you're like i don't really know how to do this but i'm gonna try yeah we're gonna try and maybe i mean someone might be a savant and just like get it but that's rare give yeah. your brain something to focus on count the breath follow the breath just i mean when i'm meditating if you were to read my mind you'd hear in ah <laughs> fully in and out because now my brain has something to focus on yeah. Count the breaths. How many breaths have I breathed this session? Because focusing on your breath is a breathing meditation. Yeah. Try counting to five. If you can make it to five, try counting to 10. Yeah. To 10 without interruption, try counting to 15. If you can yeah. do all of that, you know, I, I, would, I can barely do that. And I've been meditating for years. <laughs> I've, I've gotten to seven. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'm like seven powdered toast. What? Like just <laughs> the randomest thoughts yeah, come in. And it's it, it's... hard. That's what <laughs> people don't like, it's not common. I think to just, you know, it, it is hard to meditate. However, the point of it is to be with wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. And if where you're at is I can only count two breaths in and out before I get distracted. That is where you are at. And every time you do one breath or you get distracted and you come back, that's like doing one rep of meditation. Yeah. <laughs> one rep of meditation, the next time you do meditation, you can do maybe three breaths or maybe two and a half breaths. Like we start with like, I'm gonna sit down and create a meditation practice daily of 10 minutes. Don't start there unless you are maybe, you know, 
really trying to make it hard on yourself, start with, I'm going to sit down and take two breaths or five breaths. My, my favorite is any extra that you do is, is beneficial on top of that. These, these monks can sit for hours. <laughs> Are you a monk? No. <laughs> have you been training for the decades? These guys have put the time and effort in like their mental, their mental abilities are off the charts because they train them. No, like, but, but it makes me feel so bad. Why are you comparing yourself against a master? That would be like me yeah. saying, you know, I can't take as long of an ice bath as Wim Hof. I'm a failure at this. Totally discounting <laughs> all of the. I yeah. can't take a two hour ice bath. I, I can't. I'm oh, a failure. God. I'm a failure. <laughs> Life is awful. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm okay with the fact that I can take an ice bath, period. So even yeah. if you're just attempting meditation, follow the breath, get that proper expansion. If you just want to focus your entire meditation on holy crap, can I breathe correctly? Dude, that's where I'm at in my just, journey. And I've been just studying get to the, the breath for two years. Yeah, just get to the point where you're breathing right. Who cares if you can silence your mind? Let's get your mind focused on, okay, expansion in the lower two ribs laterally when I inhale. Okay. Okay, I have that. But it's not just a lateral expansion because you need a full 360 degree inflation I around. do that, yeah. Yeah. So no, and then do it like naturally. And, and then, you know, put your hands, fingertips aligned on your sternum above your pecs. As you inhale, you want your hands to separate naturally. Rather than rise vertically. That adds stress. So just find that proper breath. Yeah. Find the 11 second breath. You can read about it. It's all over the world in so many meditations and so many chants and so many prayers it's it's naturally dropping into that 11 second breath you know in four out six will lead you to that calm state but still in for five and a half out for five and a half is amazing that slows yeah, your that's a balancing it's a balanced I mean, the, breath the four in six out does a slight calming to your to your nervous system basically so it's mm -hmm. to, to lower the stress if you're at a perfect spot and you're like chill enough you can also do five in, five out and yeah. just focus on how am I breathing? Or if you're really tired and you want to increase your actual energy levels, you can breathe like five seconds in, three seconds out. Yeah, pick that pace up. It's just whatever ratio it is that you need. It's just this big lever that sits inside of you. It's this tool that you can use in any situation at any time to increase or decrease your energy levels and your focus. And, and consciously, I want to add the word consciously in there. It, we can let that lever sit on autopilot all day. Yep. But then if we have bad behaviors, bad habits, it's it's moving the lever for us. My, my default is like, I'm going to breathe like half a second in, half a second out, and then be like, why do I feel stressed? Yeah. <laughs> why, am I, why, is, I don't, why am I stressed? Why is my heart beating so fast? Why am yeah. I sweating? Oh, yeah. and, and it's basically... If you breathe through your mouth all day long unconsciously, you're telling your body, I'm being chased by the world's slowest bear. So I need you to freak out all day long and be stressed. And yeah. I hear this time and time again from people. It can't be that easy. It can't be that easy. And if it's, if it is that easy, then why are you fighting it so hard? If it's that easy, if it's that like, you know, Oh, it can't be that simple. Try it. Yeah. Try it for as simple as it sounds. It is so hard to master. And the exactly. benefits just keep compounding. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, that default mode breath used to lead me into panic attacks, asthma attacks, hospitalizations from the age of two and a half to 13. I was like in and out of the hospital. Like I literally would get so excited about Christmas break, Christmas, my birthday and new year's, which are all like right after each other. I would get excited. And end up in the hospital and four years in a row i was literally in the hospital for a week of that period of time because i would get positively excited mm -hmm. and so it didn't matter whether that was a negative feeling or a you know a positively created stressor or a negatively created stressor whatever it was would lead to oh chris is in the hospital now and well, yeah. it, it's like you know and, and that's just like if you let it be the way that it is and, and for everybody it's different and until you actually take a little bit of time to check in and see what is my relationship with the breath and what do you need it to do? That's, there. that's huge. I want everyone to really listen to what Chris just said. It's different for everybody. Yeah. We are all on our journey for health, strength, and happiness. So if you find a breathwork modality and you're like, this is not for me, don't stop looking. Yeah. 
there's there's one out there for you if you want one to climb mountains and you want one to help with autoimmune diseases and body inflammation and optimizing your cardiovascular system well everyone optimizes your cardiovascular system but for that other stuff wim hof method is the best in the world at all of that totally if you want um you know to 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 really take the time to lean into your breath to help with anxiety asthma um sleep apnea and snoring yeah you're chronically stressed yeah yeah wim hof will help with that but if you're adding buteco and oxygen advantage on top you're going to see an amazing symbiosis between those two breath works like if you're i was doing wim hof without the buteco and without the oxygen advantage and that was there was a missing there to me as an anxious person where the breath work the wim hof breath work became uh work like like really, really work, work, work. And I was like, why, what, you know, what's here for me? Why do I not really feel the greatest after these? Why, what, what is that? And to me, it was, I never learned how to take a functional breath in the first mm-hmm. place. So with the Wim Hof breathing, when you're breathing deep like that, I wasn't doing it right. And I was just causing more stress in areas and more anxiety because of that. And until I actually took the time to sit down and be like with the breath, Take the small, low, slow, what are they, what is all three of those? But the low, slow, small breaths. Then I actually started getting in touch with like, oh, okay, well, this is what can push the level the other way and calm me down Mm -hmm. in a way that I personally need, especially either after or before I do Wim Hof breath work. Well, and then once you learn that foundational breath, once you find- That, that, you know, once you get that brick brick foundation laid, you, you're taking proper breaths, you, you're using your diaphragm, you're getting the lateral expansion, you're breathing with the correct cadence, you've got the chemical CO2 and O2 saturation in your bloodstream to where it should be because you've used those exercises to build your O2 tolerance. Yeah. Then it's time to really deep dive into the Wim Hof method. Breathe mm-hmm. through your mouth, start to bring on that feeling of anxiety consciously, and then know you have the power to exhale, hold, and, and send that stress away. Dude, so, it, it's like literally within the last like week and a half of actually studying the oxygen advantage. And I'm, I'm doing the instructor training for that right now uh, over the next 12 weeks. Uh, I've finally, like, I think for the first time maybe in my entire life actually found the space of like not being in that stressful state. Nice. So, that, so then I'm like, then I'm getting into the Wim Hof method and I'm like, oh, Oh, like I'm actually consciously creating that heightened mm-hmm. state and that slight discomfort that that I didn't realize was there all the time for me usually. Mm-hmm. And so it's only now within going into like the small, low, slow, five in, five out, 20 minute meditation in the morning, 20 minute breath work in the morning to where afterwards when I do the Wim Hof method, I'm like going from a baseline of actually not having anything there to slowly getting into it versus like starting up here and then getting really deep into it. I'm like, Oh, I see this space now. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that, that journey will be different for everybody. Yeah. And, and what's, what's crazy is we all need to take the time. I mean, cause I can't breathe for anyone else. I can see when someone's stressed out, I can see them breathing incorrectly, but I can't do the work for you. I don't call myself a coach. We're Wim Hof method instructors. Yeah, we can show you, we can instruct you in the proper way to do it, but the tools must be utilized. And it, it's people, oh, I don't have time. Well, the, how's the quality of life you're having now? You're avoiding all of these uncomfortable situations that cause you stress on a daily basis that, that maybe unconsciously you didn't know you were creating for yourself. Mm-hmm. But by taking the time to, to really listen to our body, to, to figure out, okay, so how am I supposed to breathe optimally? Because I'll say it again, the body searches for easy, not optimal. Yeah. So find big that difference. correct optimal breath. There's a big difference. Mm-hmm. And the more you make a suboptimal choice, the more your body tells you it's the correct choice. Yeah. So even when you made the correct choice for yourself and you're doing it right, your body's going to be like, whoa, whoa, stop. I mean, taking that functional breath for the first time for a week, people tell me, oh, my ribs are sore. Yeah literally why are my ribs sore it's just breathing I'm like because you never used them like that like they're supposed to be <laughs> so yeah using muscles you're not used to is going to take work using your nose takes work and i mean some people have deviated septums some people have a, a physiological impedance that makes it impossible to breathe correctly go see an ear nose and throat specialist 
Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> go see someone who can help with that. And, and, you know, tape your mouth shut at night. Don't breathe through your mouth at night. The best advice I can give anyone who's like, what can I do to start? Something, something easy. And, and like, you know, the Americans, we need a pill. How about a no, no pill? Just tape. Just shush. It, maybe half an hour before bed. Try it so that you're used to wearing it instead of right before sleep. And give yourself permission to fail. I took my tape off my mouth for a month before I left it until the morning. And now I don't need tape. I still do, but sometimes I don't tape my mouth shut and my mouth stays shut because that's what it's used to doing. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious actually for myself. I mean, I've, I've, I don't like, I've never snored and I actually don't know if I breathe through my mouth at all when I'm, when I'm asleep. But I wake up in the morning with, you know, just fine, you know, not, no issues, no dry mouth or anything like that. But I'm curious just to try it anyways to see if my sleep quality will change because there may be moments or times during the night where I am actually breathing through my, mm -hmm. through my mouth. So I'm, I'm actually about to go on that journey as well, which I'm excited to go on. Now, for everyone out there who, whose body just stiffened because they're like, oh, my God, that seems extreme to tape my mouth shut. If you were to break your finger... They're going to tape it to the next one and immobilize it so that you can't use it improperly. If you break your arm, they cast it so it's immobilized and you can't use it improperly. The same concept goes for your breath. Tape your mouth shut so you immobilize it and you can't use it improperly and your body defaults to what it's supposed to do, which is nasal breathing. So while it may seem extreme, you've got to put it into the perspective of how we treat other injuries, how we rehab other muscles and, and, and joints within our body. And taping your mouth shut is just a form of breath rehab. It's, it's, yeah. it, we've got to start somewhere. I mean, Jesse Coomer, who's another Wim Hof Method instructor, I don't know where he got this quote from, but it's amazing. And it's, it's practice does not make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Mm, I like that. Yeah. And the more we've been practicing unconsciously breathing incorrectly, the more our body tells us it's what to do. Mm. So the oh, more it feels natural. If you're practicing the, the unoptimal thing. You're making the unoptimal thing a permanent thing. Yes. Really. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, and that's, that's all about, I mean, I mean, keeping a flexible mind, keeping a flexible body, keeping yourself in a state of openness rather than that stressed out, like solid Oak that just cracks eventually, you know? Or, or even when you're, you know, in that state where you're hyper focused and you can't even concentrate on anything else, like, you know, like the rest of the room is blurry, but the screen in front of you is like hyper focused. That's like the predator, like hunting thing, yeah. in heightened state. If you're Tunnel vision. That constantly, it's not good for you. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what percentage of people uh, actually are, are mouth breathers, breathe through their mouth? I don't know a percentage um, that I wouldn't make up. <laughs> gotcha. I'm, 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 I'm guessing from what I see. Um, well, actually, now I see masks. Before, when people weren't wearing masks, I would say four out of every five people were mouth breathing um, mm. unconsciously. And some of those people would, you know, that, that, that weird one person who was nose breathing wasn't doing it constantly they would stop mm -hmm. and my favorite thing to do was to just sit and watch people breathe and mm. you sit in a park and you watch kids breathe and they're running with their mouth closed and they're full sp speed sprinting around the park here come their parents <gasps> huffing and puffing right behind them and i'm like that's right that's how it's done <laughs> that's what not to do Oh man, it's like, yeah, how can we just, you know, have more open discussion about this type of thing? And like, you know, it, it's such a basic thing that we've taken for granted for so long. And it seems like, you know, it's it's finally starting to kind of pop into the, the normal open culture. And so it's just, it's so amazing to be able to have these modalities that we have in Facebook Live and whatever other streams and to record this stuff and then share it with other people is yes. so much fun. And, you know, if if anybody watching has more questions or wants to experience the Wim Hof Method breath work, uh, we have a session tonight at 9 p.m. with live music performed by myself and Chuck, I think is on that side, uh, is uh, leading the breath. 
Same with uh, Wednesday mornings at 6.30 and Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock a.m. PST. Um, so you're all welcome to come in. They're no cost, uh, just your attention and time, as Chuck likes to say. And um, it, well, it, to be here. in my opinion, your time and attention is the most valuable resource we possess. When I spend money, I don't look at it as me spending 10 bucks uh, on something. I look at it as this is how much time it took me to earn this. And by spending this piece of paper, I am giving you the time it took me to earn it. So, you know, it may seem a little weird to think of it that way, but it puts it into perspective that, you know, when you buy something that's multiple thousands of dollars, that's multiple hours and weeks and months of your life that you're giving to purchase that thing. So just be cognizant with, with how you spend your money, how you spend your time and attention. I mean, there's all this clickbaity stuff all over the place. There's a lot of people who are going to try and convince you, buy this pill, buy this tool, um, take this thing, do this thing, and really start with your breath. Yeah. Start, start. It's, it's a free tool. There's so much good literature out there. Patrick McEwen's been at this for 20 years. Wim Hof has been doing this for, for two and a half decades as well. Yep, the Wim Hof method, breath oh, by James God. Nestor, a practical guide to breathwork by Jesse Coomer, and the oxygen advantage by Patrick McEwen. And yeah. Patrick's, yeah, they're all great. Buy all four of those books are amazing <laughs> books. All amazing books. Well, it's, it, it's to me, you know, this is something that I've been searching for for literally my entire life. From, from the age of two and a half was when I had my first asthma attack, and I've been like recovering and trying to figure out how to breathe and how to be the most optimal. And, you know, I'm, I'm always looking in my life for what is the, the biggest impact that I can have on the world. And you know, recently it came down to like, dude, the breath is in every single thing that we do. Mm -hmm. If you aren't breathing properly, you can't exercise right. You can't focus properly. This isn't just for people. This is, this is totally for people with asthma, for people with allergies, with uh, sleep apnea, all that stuff. It's also for people that are super high performers. Mm -hmm. It's for the, the, the high athletes. It's for the Olympic medalists. It's, you know, those are the people that they go in and they, they've studied this. And this is starting to trickle down to all of us. Yeah. And so the more we can converse about this, the more we can be out here sharing this information with people, the more effectively people can use their breath breath which is the one free thing that we actually have and we yeah. have the capacity to cultivate it and to bring it into anything so ceos management that want to focus and be able to have conversations and to be resilient to emotions and to situations and be able to make presentations and be able to talk effectively like it's literally the core of everything yeah to be the pilot not the passenger precisely be the pilot <laughs> and don't 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 react anticipate and, and yeah. being in that calm state of the breath puts you in that 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 state but letting it get away from you i mean you're one third less intelligent when you're in a state of high emotion whether that's a positive as you've discovered or negative mm -hmm. emotion yeah. so if you're really excited about something and you're trying to give a presentation you're not at the top of your game yeah congratulations on being excited and impassioned but you are giving away some of your mental acumen and that's not something you want during a presentation. Have that excitement, but also have that calm confidence and strength that comes with that slow breath, with that 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 nasal breathing, with the ability to speak. Because you know, if you get really excited and you start talking about it, your whoa, 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 you'll you'll hear. Just dial it back a notch. Just what you'll hear people say. Just just take it down. <laughs> dial it back a notch, man. And I know you got to get running to go take the kids out to the snow. Snow day. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us here today. We will be back. We will do more breath talk. We will be bringing in uh, other presenters and people that are experts on this subject to get that information out to all of you. Uh, Chuck and I are practitioners and um, working on this all the time. We are what we like to call pulmonots. Mm -hmm. so, thank you, James Nestor, for that title. I love it. Seriously, it's so good. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the benefit. When you read books, you'll come across terms that you're like, oh, yeah, I'm totally stealing that. Yeah, because <laughs> pulmonot sounds so much better than dudes who like breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, everyone, for dedicating this time to the breath. The breath can be your biggest enemy or your most powerful tool. We want it to be the latter. <laughs> so ask yourself today, what is your relationship with the breath? 
do you have one? Is it there at all? Is it positive? Is it negative? Do you just never pay any attention to it? And inquire into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Please like, share, subscribe, check out our upcoming events. Chuck uh, and I are doing an amazing four hour course on the breath this weekend, Saturday from 11 o'clock to three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And um, we're super excited to share that with everyone. Uh, the tickets are on our events page. They're 150 bucks per person. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much. Until next time, everyone, breathe relaxed, slow, low, and with love. Yeah.